What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another matchup from the Dota 2 Raid Colleague. I'm bringing you Game 2 between Didi and No Time to Didi. Looking pretty sharp these days, after being uh, pretty unlucky in their previous uh, sponsors, whether it be MYM, Eclipsia, etc., etc., but now they're looking pretty sharp. So hopefully they will get sponsored again, as Crit looks like he's no longer Stan Crit, he's just DD Crit. So that is very nice for Didi. Me on No Time to ever since getting back Eternal Envy have been looking pretty strong themselves. Unfortunately, they did just lose the series against, I can't honestly remember, for the life of me. Oh, against Empire. 2-1. to one. So that is uh, a little bit of a touchy subject for No Time to, I'm sure, as they are very practicing, very, very hard. Eternally actually sleeps on a European schedule so they can get up early and scrim. So I'm sure No Time to trying to turn things around. They are participating in a lot of leagues, a lot of tournaments, and uh, trying to do as best they can. But this is game two. DD did lose game one, so they are on the brink of defeat, at least in this particular series. And I'm sure DD want to keep up the momentum after beating. Who did they beat? I think they beat Empire in an early matchup in the. Yeah, they did. I casted that entire series in an earlier series in the Dota 2 Ray Colleague, so I'm sure they want to keep up their momentum. And again, if you want to catch this cast anywhere else, check out One More Game TV 2. YouTube.com slash one more game TV two and twitch.tv slash one more game TV two for the cast that AC and Jaskal did. And yes, I know there's a Navi versus Team Liquid, but I think Lumi wants to cast some of those games and uh, I will let him do that because he is Lumis. But no Tyranter, banning out the Bower, Didi gonna do a respect ban against Animal Bulldog, but Animal Bulldog plays so many good heroes. Um, Magnetar also banned out by DD, so not tied enter. Do not have the first pickup, but there's still a lot of very powerful hero stuff in the pool. Nyx, who I always forget about. Undying, I think, might be the ban by no tied enter here, unless they want to pick it up themselves. Darkseer. Many more, as. Yeah, no tied enter taking their times. I'm sure they're discussing what roles, what picks, what they're thinking what DD might choose with their first option. DD, of course, do have the first pick, so I imagine they'll pick up something like a Darkseer if they manage to get their hands on it. And we'll see what kind of lineup DD decides to go for. I know No Time to really like picking pretty much five semi carries, whether it be support stand, support gyro, and just sort of uh, roaming with two of the supports and then just uh, winning with an immensely farm loadup. But No Time to gonna bat the Wisp, so DD, I imagine, gonna choose the Darkseer right now. Or Undying could be a potential pickup right here, but I think Undying might be a little bit overrated. I don't know, that's just my gut opinion. Maybe I'm just uh, a little bit jelly that Undying is now top tier. And I can't be hipster saying, Oh, I was playing Undying before all you guys played Undying. The Dota hipster. I was playing Barret and Undying before he was top tier. What are these scrubs doing? Ten seconds remaining. But still, you, you gotta take a bit of time. I think Dark's are probably a strong choice here, unless they go for Undying. Uh, yeah, <laughs> what else can I say? We got no time to, I'm sure, trying to think of how they can possibly fit five carries in the lot. But DD gonna choose the Nyx right here instead of the Darkseer. So gonna leave no time to with the option of picking Darkseer and Dying. Or no time to could potentially go for their five semi carry strat with two of those semi carries roaming, whether it be a support span, support gyro, or some other crazy combination that Eternal Envy has concocted. But I'm sure they want to secure one of their heroes for Animal Bulldog right here, whether it be a Bounty Hunter, Darkseer, etc., etc. And DD are on the rainy side, no time to run the dire side, so it's a little bit more tricky for Undying to get as much experience because it's a lot more easy for him to get some creeps by pulling the rain creeps to the dire neutral camp rather than the other way around. But still, no time to taking a lot of time. And of course, that's if Undying is in the offlane position at all. But I'm sure they want to try to secure themselves a midsole for S4 as well. S4 has really come into his own as a really strong player. It's been said, if you give S4 Batrider, you pretty much are done. So that's why Batrider is such a high priority pickup for no tie hunter. But it is going to be a bounty hunter for Bulldog and a Luna for Loda. So two of their most popular heroes already picked up right now. And we'll see how DD decides to counteract these measures. They have an extremely strong support in the form of that Nyx Assassin. Of course, Nyx Assassin and Bounty Hunter pretty much brothers in arms, but will be deadly enemies in this game. So, 
DD, how will they surround the Nyx Assassin pick? I imagine they might try to use a midsole here because it's not really worth uh, bending out Bulldogs here when he's already going to play the, the Bounty Hunter. And I'm sure No Tide probably going to choose S Wars Hero next. If they don't, I'd be a little bit confused. Time. But again, though Bounty Hunter and Luna, strong heroes, but not really banned material these days. Me on Nyx. Darkseer dying for the 80th times. Pretty much seen as much higher caliber picks these days. And DD still need their offlane hero, so those heroes could be strong pickups for them. But again, I think it might be wise for DD to snatch up the midsole before no time to start banning out midsoles altogether. Or no time to probably just gonna bet out carries that they really don't like a lot of facing up against. But DD gonna pick up. A very early Nature's Prophet, really interesting. I don't honestly think No Time Hunter would have banned it. My Nature's Prophet is still a very powerful hero. The problem is he takes a little bit too long to get going. And uh, unfortunately, he gets pressured very easily. And DD can immediately surrender with the Lush Track. Man, is this two months ago? As, no. Or is this TI2 days? Because these picks are very popular in TI2. But really have not been seeing as much attention these days. But this does indicate that DD might go for a bit of aggressive pushing strategy. And now, how will No Time to react? Because they do like to dual roam, but dual roaming up against a Leshrac, not really the best idea because Leshrac can just throw on so much damage in the early game. And No Time to are going to pick up the Rubik, so picking up Rubik pretty high. And that does leave. That does mean that S4 is here most likely is still left in the pool, so we'll see if DD starts banning out potential mid solos. But DD starts to pick up mid solo themselves, but they do have the first pick up after the ban phase. So it's going to be an interesting second ban phase as both heroes trying to vie for positioning. I'm sure uh, Keeper Light will be a ban by DD, I imagine. Dire team ban. As Sven's going to be banned for DD, knowing that Eternal Envy loves that Sportsman. And Sportsman, still very relevant. Even if he doesn't have enough mana to really feel the Storm Bolt, having an immense armor aura, having that move speed buff, having. Innate physical damage, steroid boost, and pretty much meaning that you can't ignore Sportsman in team fights. Otherwise, he will just do a lot of damage and potentially uh, just be very annoying to deal with. So DD gonna remove that factor out of the equation entirely. We'll see if they remove Aki's support Gyrocopter as well. But considering that one support has already been chosen by No Time Hunter, might be a bit of overkill for DD to remove that Gyrocopter as well. But Note Hunter taking a lot of time dipping into a bit of the reserve time to think about the bans. Uh, it's pretty surprising that Kipilo has not yet been picked or banned thus far, but no, Undying is gonna be a choice here, so no time Hunter trying to seal up the lanes. I think Nyx Lesh Hmm. Will they run a mid soul Lesh or an offlane Nature's Prophet? And that's really the decision here. They could do a jungle nature's prophet so it can get a lot more on safe farm, even if he doesn't get as many potential levels. Or they could do a mid soul rush rack. I think it might be a mid soul rush rack. Or they could even do dual lane mids. DD has a really, really versatile lineup thus far, but it might be a little bit too awkward as it's not really standard these days, but still does have a lot of potential. So No Time Hunter might anticipate DD running that rush rack in mid lane. That's why they ban out the Undying so that the Trilane, whoever gets matched up against the Trilane of Nyx Undying and whoever else is in that Trilane would just be miserable up against that. But DD gonna ban out the Templar Assassin, removing one of S4's mid soul heroes. We'll see if Queen of Pain, Darkseer gets removed shortly after. But Darkseer neither picked or banned thus far. Really interesting, because Darkseer faded out a little bit in terms of winning percentage, even if he hadn't faded out in terms of pick status. But now he has bounced back in a hard way. And there goes the Darkseer ban, trying to really remove all of No Time to his mid soul heroes that S4 could potentially play. And No Time to uh, helping them helping out DD a little bit by banning out the Broodmaster and the Batrider. But still, I mean, No Time to could potentially run a dual lane mid, but honestly I haven't seen S4 run a dual lane mid. S4 really competent mid soul. But honestly, I have just not seen him in too many games as a dual lane mid. I'm sure you can do that fantastically as well if you had to. But still. So who are other potential mids? Queen of Pain is still in the pool. We'll see if DD decides to choose it up. Um, but I think at this point, they might go with the midsole Lush Rack. Really difficult, again, just to predict the lanes just by these first couple picks and bans. But No Hunter really taking a lot of time considering all the viable options. 
taking every game very seriously. They're going to be out the life stealer, so life stealer, uh, very powerful carry up against Luna because of that rage, no neutralizing a lot of the eclipse damage. And Beastmaster is going to be Trist for DD. What is this lineup? Really strange pushing lineup. So the inner beast, the nature's prophet, treants, but not really the staring pushing lineup by DD that you didn't normally expect. And meanwhile, no time to. Will they snap the Queen of Pain for S4? Or will they go a bit more aggressive? They might want to get a secondary ganker for Bounty Hunter, whether it be something like... I think Night Stalker would be a solid choice, because everybody on DD, for the most part, is pretty squishy. Nature's Prophet, Leshrac, even Beastmaster can't really slow down the assault of Night Stalker once uh, Roar is on cooldown. So I think Night Stalker, in conjunction with the Bounty Hunter, could just give DD fits of trouble. Reserve time. And really secure Loda a lot of firing space on that Luna. But again, wouldn't be too surprised if Gyrocopter was picked up here for Aki. And no time to really take a lot of time, and there's the Night Stalker, so yeah, I think this is a really great choice. Once the Bounty hits level 6, once the Night Stalker hits that first night, they'll just be able to gank all over the map, and really just give DD a load of trouble, because, again, they're not really the most tanky heroes, and all their spells, all these heroes on the side of DD do want a bit of experience in order to combat these really, really terrifying geeky duo of Night Stalker Bounty Hunter. Even if there is no Invisibros on side, no time to, I mean, Night Stalker Bounty Hunter pretty much almost as good. So how will DD combat this? They, they still need their late game carry, and it will have to be pushing oriented, I imagine, because or something that synergizes as well with the Beastmaster, and they're gonna pick up the Juggernaut, and this is pretty awesome lab, not gonna lie. I mean, it doesn't look too out of the ordinary, but these days, heroes like Nature's Prophet, Leshrac, Beastmaster, not really seen too often in the Western scene, and even Juggernaut has really fallen out of favor. The Juggernaut Healing Ward, and he does benefit decently from the Beastmaster Aura, but the Healing Ward is really what's going to sustain DD's push. So it's going to be push versus gank, and we'll see how No Time to has, decides to adapt to this. But meanwhile, we know DD's strategy is going to be to push. But how will DD lane it? It's going to be Nyx supporting Juggernaut. Five seconds remaining. DD are on the range side, so it's a little bit more tricky for Beastmaster because he can't really have easy access to stacking the Ancients with the Wild Axes as he could if he was on the dire side. So could potentially see a midsole Beastmaster, but we are going to see a Gyrocopter for Aki, I imagine. So already, really, really awesome game, just from the picks. Well, not awesome, just uh, hopefully it'll be an exciting game. Hopefully we'll see a lot of ganking actions and just uh, chaos all over the map. And again, uh, Dota 1 replays have been released, speaking of chaos, because Pino Dota all about that chaos. Dota 1 replays are starting to be released a bit more frequently with a lot of Burmese Dota. And I probably won't cast all of them, I'll probably cast one or two, and I'll probably only cast heroes that are not in Dota 2, but even heroes like Silence or Drow, or are not in competitive Dota 2, I might cast, just to see how they might fare in the Dota 2 competitive scene. Because uh, casting heroes like uh, Magnus, the Darkseer, Bat, in Dota 1, really just not interesting to me. It's really just a lot more interesting to see how heroes like Drow, Silence, or Skywrath, uh, Legion Commander, if he ever gets picked, which I really doubt, would be chosen, or would be uh, picked. That's what interests me in Dota 1 still. But we'll go over the players and the teams. As we're going to see DD on the rate, we're going to have Rise play the Leshrac. Already has Observer Wards in his pocket with the Clarity. So it's not going to be mid solo Leshrac. It is going to be a support Leshrac. It's going to be Calculus. Probably offlane Nature's Prophet as he's going to pick up two Tangos. Actually, I think DD might just abandon the offlane altogether. Crit is going to be playing the Beastmaster. He's going to go mid with the fast ball rush up against the Night Stalker. Link is going to be playing the Juggernaut, picking up an early Ring of Protection. Might be for Tranquilus, might be for Basilius to get the push going. I imagine it's going to be Basilius to help accelerate the push. And we're going to have Sakshka playing the Nyx Assassin. Already has a Smoke of Deceit and Sentry Wards to spot out any potential Observer Wards that do anticipate the Smoke of Deceit. Meanwhile, on the side of No Time to, we're going to have Aki playing the Gyrocopter. I think he bought the curve, maybe even bought the wards as well, as he does not have too much money left in the, box, in the bank. Eternal Envy. Man, No Time to, I think they're spending so much money on wards. They have reserve wards and sentry wards on Eternal Envy, and Eternal Envy is essentially broke. Bulldog has a poor man shield. No, they just gave a lot of their regen to Bulldog with that poor man shield uh, as highest net worth bounty hunter. Checking out the net worth right now. Uh, 565, but again, poor man shield, salve, and tango, and a clarity, wouldn't be able to pick this up, but Bulldog's gonna be playing the bounty hunter, 
Loda is actually going to go mid so or just middle with that Luna. Probably going to be helped out by Envy or Aki as they see fit. And it's going to be S4 playing the top lane with that Night Stalker. So I guess they really just want to have Night Stalker farm as much as possible. And just try to gank the pushers before the pushers start pushing. And it's interesting trading up farm for experience for the Night Stalker. Because some of the experience will be sucked up by Aki I imagine. And uh, Loda, I'm sure, going to have a bit of help. But Loda probably fares a little bit better up against Crit on that Beastmaster than, I guess, S4 would. Even though I'm sure S4 would not be too troubled by Beastmaster Solomon, but the Axe is going to fly in, harassing Loda down a little bit. And once Beastmaster picks up his bottle, which will be in about 60 gold, he should be just fine. Meanwhile, DD placing so many centroids all across the map, just trying to catch out Bulldog wherever he goes in. And maybe some harassment being traded back and forth. As Bulldog going to get impaled right into the ground. Just going to man up with that Tango Regen man fight between Sakshka and Bulldog. As Bounty Hunter, you can see he wanted to go back for that increased backstab dance. But unfortunately, uh, he felt like it might have been a bit too greedy. And just decided to back off for a little bit. So he lost the man fight. He was the first one to win out Bulldog. I'm disappointed in you. I expected better things. As already using his clarity, he used a couple wind walks right off the bat. As expect this to be a very passive game until Night Stark hits level 6 and starts ganging with that first knight, and then all hell will break loose. But unfortunately, Banner is just going to be very, very hard pressed to get any experience. These days, Banner has been getting a bit more experience because uh, he was like Shadow Demon, not really the best, but you can see the Dabal Edict hitting invisible units, just doing a bow damage to Bulldog, forcing him off the lane completely. As you can see, the last hits, uh, S4 just getting absolute free farm. Does get that last hit. And meanwhile, Loda faring decently well against Crit. We'll see if Loda picks up a bottle. Loda has been a huge hand of Midas mood these days, but I imagine it's going to go for a bottle. Yep, bottle is up on the courier. And that Stalker, I don't know if he will get bottle. He might get one, but I imagine he'll go for Urn, Phase, or Treads. Probably Treads in this situation. Just so he can tread switch for a bit more extra mana. As you can see, Bounty Hunter really hard pressed to stay in any lane. And the Dire just not going to get contested in the top lane whatsoever. So just a lot of pulling, a lot of stacking going on. Very typical of Western Dota these days. As we will see, Link going to get pressured under the tower a bit. Th still 13 CS, lasting admirably against the Admiral. As Bulldog going to block off this neutral camp. Really smart plays by Bulldog, but unfortunately Shadow Walk is cooling down very rapidly. And he's forced to back off. As No, he is going to block off the camp. Nicely done by Bulldog. And it does have that Shadow Walk to escape to safety. But actually it looks like Didi might want to get the push going right now. And that might be actually what they're waiting for. They want to have to have Stun and the Edict going on. And we'll see what measures No Tanter will do to prevent this. But this is going to allow Bulldog to get more experience. And actually, Didi thinking a little bit better of their push. No, just blocking the creeps so that the creeps on these. So the Siege Wagon will have a little bit of an easier path to reinforce it. As I don't think they're going to deny any of their creeps right now. And Bulldog, not even level 2 just yet. But the Siege Wagon camp is approaching. Healing Road is dropped. And this tower going to be under a lot of pressure. And there's really not too much Bulldog can be... Can be can do to stop this as Split does go down on Bulldog. Here comes the Blade Fury. Bulldog tried to juke to the right, but Link follows him perfectly with that Sentry Ward. And Juggernaut does pick up the kill. Nicely done. As the Healing Ward helping out the push. Immediate teleport back in by Bulldog because he is just level 1. Trying to kill off that Sentry Ward, but unfortunately is going to be thwarted. And an immediate tier 1 tower. 4 minutes in the game being picked up by DD. And now, how will no time to deal with this? Because they line up really not that good in terms of anti pushing. Unless I ro rotate Rubik and just go for Flak Cannon oriented Gyrocopter. As I line up, there's a lot more ganking heavy. As another Sentry Ward is going to be used, Split Earth is going to fall. Bulldog is going to die yet again. Fortunately, the Heal Wing Ward for DD is going to be down because the Juggernaut not going to have enough mana to keep fueling that. But still, going to do a bit of damage with that Basilius turn on. Uh, no Edict mana just yet either, just using their mana to get kills on Bulldog. Definitely helping out Link for that gold department. And we'll see what item Link goes for, whether it be Aquila. As you can see, Link just going to absorb some of the damage and wants to keep up that Siege Dragon. Really smart place by DD, as he wants to keep that Siege Dragon alive, so I can keep doing additional damage and rise 
positioning himself just outside the tower range. Bulldog gonna soak up a bit of that edict damage. Really smart plays by both sides as they're really making really smart decisions because Bulldog, knowing that Rise is positioning himself so that the edict will only hit the tower, not hit any creeps. But Bulldog doesn't want his tower to die, so he actually soaked up a couple of the hits of the edict himself and just uh, went back on the offensive. Really smart plays on both sides. But the tower is gonna be safe for now. You're not in deny range. And Link, I imagine, wants to get the Healing Word. I imagine he'll use the Healing Word rather than the Blade Fairy, unless they can get for sure kill on Bulldog, which they might be able to do very, very soon. Envy, level 4, Aki level 5. Actually, Aki is getting a lot of experience thus far, and his Bulldog is going to get trapped yet again. Calcus does teleport in and is going to pick up a kill, and the tower is going to be claimed by Didi without too much rebuttal by No Tide. And if I were DD, I'd just stay together, play 5-man Dota up against a Night Stalker, because Night Stalker is going to have absolute free farm, man. First night has hit, as I did almost a Porky the Pig impression, just saying abs, 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 absolutely free farm. But Loda is going to pick up Invisibility Rune, and DD just going to back off. I really was hoping that DD would just continue the pressure, but now Night Stalker, it is first night. It is his time to shine, saving up those skill points. And now they're going to try to claim the tier 1 tower themselves. And I don't know if Didi can actually defend this. Looks like they're not even bothering to do so. Crit wants to sort of protect it, but really can't really fight up against S4, Aki, and Envy. I just imagine, imagine Aki is just saving that extra skill point. Has 3 points in the rocket barrage. Axe is going to fly in. S4 not going to dive, but still they're going to claim the tier 1 tower nonetheless on the top lane. You know, what's Loda doing? He has an invisibility ring. Looks like Loda for once in his life wants to kill heroes rather than creeps. Gonna wrap around trying to pick up a kill on somebody. He's gonna find a wild rise in the forest and rise. Gonna die in three hits of that eclipse. Nicely done by Loda. Saying, I'll get these hero kills as a missile's gonna fly in for crit. Here comes a rocket barrage shortly after. Can crit escape? Crit will escape successfully. It looks like S4 took a little bit too much damage and was unable to get the dive going. Roar was used on S4, I do believe to really mitigate a lot of Esports pursuit and that is going to help save the life of Crit in this engagement. You know, what's Calculus doing? He's just sort of chilling out. Gonna go for that Midas build. I'd rather Calculus try to go for straight up Necrobook, but I can sort of see where he's coming from. He wants to get that Nature's Prophet going and get that experience going as well. Still, Necrobook, I feel like, a very strong pushing on him, and I think no time to do have the advantage in the late game. I mean, it's very difficult to say that they don't. They have Gyrocopter, even as the sport could potentially do a lot of damage in the late stages of the game. Luna is having uh, a grand old time in that mid lane, as far as having free farm, but still. No time to. We'll have to be careful, because DD do have a slight tower lead, evidenced by the goal graph slightly in favor of the Radiant, because of that jungle and because of that tower. Uh, Sashka gonna wrap around there, gonna try to kill off Loda. Loda senses something's up, even though he didn't have a ward. As, wow, Loda, really strong map where it's no, he's just trying to get in position for the rune. Really unlucky positioning for the rune, because the rune actually spawned on the dire, or on the bottom side of the map. Roy's gonna go down to Loda, looks like they might pick up Loda anyway. As here comes the five man ganking train, Loda is gonna die for his efforts, but at least he wasted a lot of time. So not all was lost for Loda in that exchange. He wasted so much time and forced five heroes, but that is going to give Didi the avenue to initiate their push on the middle lane. And again, how no time to react to this? Not too sure. As the edict, a uh, couple of the hits were soaked up by the creeps. Only level four less track, so that level five going to be out of the question. Called on ridiculous range, going to do a bunch of damage to the rain creeps and do a significant damage to Sokska. But the healing we're going to heal back everyone up. To near full HP, Link getting a lot of points of the healing range early on, two points. Only level 7, so could only get two points if he still wants his ultimate and get that max of his nuke. Meanwhile, Envy doing a smart move, just making a massive creep wave, not denying, just going to keep the push going. And force the teleport back by Sashka. And a nice move by Didi again. They want Sashka to hit that level 6. So that's why he's teleporting back rather than somebody like Link or Rise or anything like that. Not gonna deny, a little disappointed to see how this Night Stalker is reacting, but really, what can Night Stalker do? Dive into five heroes? But usually when I see Night Stalker in the game, I'm just like, oh, first night, 80 kills time.
At least that's a high play night. Sucker, but Roy's gonna go down to S4. Wrath of Nature doing a bunch of damage as well. S4 is gonna die. Lightning Storm is gonna secure the last hit. So Rai is actually getting one point to Split Earth, two points to Lightning rather than third point to Edict. I guess he thinks the push is strong enough regardless. As Bulldog is gonna get the haste and gonna speed on out of there. Bulldog is level six, so he does have the track online. But so far, no time to thrown for a bit of a loop, I must imagine. As Loda gonna go for early game items like the drums and the Aquila. But still, how no time to react? Envy is level 6, so he has that spell still going with that level 3 Fable, but unable to really utilize that Smoke Deceit to its fullest. And again, Night Stalker did die in that last engagement. Night Stalker going to go for the straight up armlet, giving some HP as Sakshka trying to get in position to kill Loda, but Loda is going to back off, and the rain do see the Dire approaching. No, they don't, because the Dire have smoked up. And this could be a trap. Sakshka is going to get revealed by Centaur, and he's just going to die in a burst of glory. Crit approaching in a little bit too aggressively, but does realize his mistake, and Crit, unfortunately, does not have too much mana, and does not have the roar up, so he is going to have to play very careful. Link might just get initiated on, going to get that Blade Fury off to dispel the soul, but that is going to mean potentially a tier 1 tower for the Dire, but the Dire not really nearly as good as pushing as the Rayant, but still, they will be able to muscle it down. No, there's going to be Teleport in, back by Sakshka, and the Rayant really desperately wanted to defend this push. They know that the Dire do have better late game. They want to secure all the gold they can possibly get as a Rain Ward. It has been placed. I think the Rain Wards are spotted. And Naki trying to get a pot shot off. It's a battle of the Sentry Wards right now. As Link trying to get in position for an Omni Slash. Crit does get the raw off. Gets a nice axis catching two heroes. Here comes a call down. As the Blade Fury doing so much damage. Aki actually took a lot of reflected call down damage. As Link does end up dying before he can get the Omni Slash off. Gyrocop does buy back. Luna does pick up the kill. Eclipse at two good against Omni Slash and that engagement crit does end up dying as well as Loda and Ryze respectively pick up a triple kill S4 is still alive with the magic wand charge Sakshka trying to get in position for an impale trying to kill Bulldog can you kill Bulldog Bulldog does end up dying so it's gonna be three for four engagement but Sakshka might just end up dying for his troubles it's gonna get a nice impale that might just end the pursuit no S4 is gonna keep diving I like this move by S4 Knowing they so fast and that Sakshika is so low in terms of mana, Sakshika gonna have to pop that spike carapace if he wants to make out it alive. Is gonna use it right now, but it might have been a little bit too early as he does end up dying. S4 just weighed out, weighed out, and did end up killing the tower. Loda gonna clean up the tier 1 tower. But wow, what an engagement. And again, just really unfortunate for Link. Couldn't get that Omni Slash off in that fight. I feel like if he got the Omni Slash, that might have been able to give them a lot more damage, even if he didn't get a kill with the Omni Slash. Juggernaut would have died in Juggernaut's right click, uh, especially if he was able to get off a second Blade Fury with that magic 10 wand charges. Would have been able to at least get off another Blade Fury and really sustain the damage on the side of the rain. But the first night is going to come to a close very, very shortly. And how Radiant anticipate this move? I imagine Beastmaster are going to go for a Necrobook next. You know, Link has the drums as well as a phase. Unfortunately, even with the drums, not too tanky. S4, level 9, only level 1 darkness, which he already used. It's going to be on cooldown for quite a while. So DD, I think this is their best opportunity to push in and really try to get a lot of map control right now. Whether it be get the middle tier 2, get the top tier 1, they really have to make something happen. And they do have all their ultimates. Even Ryze, who actually skipped his ultimate, but still is level 6. Almost level 7, slight experience favor in favor of the Dire. And there is going to be smoke gank by the rain attempted, but the Dire very, staying very, very close to each other. Might be a trap for the rain to, as there is an Observer Ward by the Dire. Observer Wards all over the map they are anticipating. How do you get the Observer Ward there? They're anticipating that the rain are going to come in for this bottom lane and they want to see what's going to happen as they allow Bulldog to get a bit more experience. They know track going to be essential in fueling their escapades. And Calculus just going to continue to free farm knowing that I can teleport in at a moment's notice with that level 3 teleport. But Calculus struggling at this point, only with the minus and is only level 8 at this point. As the ward gonna get immediately countered by DD. How'd they see that ward? That sentry ward. Pretty ridiculous range if you think about it. And actually, I think it might just be wiser for DD just to pick up a straight up gem. <laughs> As Calcus is gonna teleport in, and it's time to fight, guys. Time for fighting. As track and I go down to rise, Link. Just gonna have the treants and the siege wagon to besiege the tower. Will there be a night healing ward already been used? So I'm sure the dire are trying to get in position as Aki and Bulldog gonna skirmish around Sakshka as he does get the D ward. Sentry ward 
being cleverly placed by the rain, spotting out both the observer and the sentry. The rain, I think they should stop the push for a little bit, just so the healing ward can cool down, and then they should start the push yet again. But Lota is going to initiate, going to cast that eclipse, but Link is going to dispel a lot of the damage. Crit is going to get the roar off on T Eternal. Envy, can he steal a spell? Omni Slash is going to be casted very soon, but Gyrocopter doing so much work into these teams' fights. Crit is going to be the next one to fall. Where's the Omni? Omni does fly in, but Link, unfortunately, Gy or Juggernaut just not tanky enough. And no time to call down Eclipse doing so much work in these engagements. And Calcus the only one left alive and he's gonna die as well. And a bunch of track kills are picked up in that engagement. Luna again picks up a triple kill. And Loa is starting to become a huge problem. He can fuel a Yasha, can pick up an Eagle Horn, he can pick up whatever he wants. And now DD. I think they're really underestimating Aki's damage call down, just doing so much work in these engagements, as well as the rocket barrage. As if you take an engagement where there are no creeps, Gyrocopter very, very powerful, Luna very powerful, and Juggernaut, he's powerful, but still. I'm just saying, I'd rather have a level 13 Luna than a level 9 Juggernaut, as I think Loda was level 11, so got multiple hits of that Eclipse off. And we'll see what Loda decided to go for. I think he went for the Yasha, I imagine. Yep, he has the Yasha up on the courier. And he's going to kill the stack, so DD's starting to lose a bit of their steam. But it is not yet second night. Arma is up on S4. I think DD should try to wait for level 11 on Juggernaut. And try to see what they can do with that. But right now, they are being thwarted in every attempt in teamfight engagements. As they have a lot of really strong g ganking tools, but their only real AoE is... Juggernaut, Blade Fury, which isn't really consistent because he can run away from it. Axes, which isn't really consistent because he can run away from it. And Leshrac, which isn't really consistent because he can run away from it. You know, on no time to, if they get the call down, if they get Eternal Envy Spade Bolt, if they get the Eclipse going down, if they get track with the extra move speed. And TH just has so many chasing mechanisms that can they can easily juke around DD and really make DD's life miserable. And you can see the gold graph, even with that tower advantage for DD, starting to climb in favor of No Time Hunter. Experience graph, definite advantage for No Time Hunter. Checking out the levels, you can see, other than Eternal Envy, Loda being level 14, four levels ahead of the highest level on the side of DD, really not speaking well in DD's situation. But DD is going to try another smoke gank. I imagine smoke's on cooldown because smokes are just being used in abundance. And they're going to try to claim S4's life. They're going to get the roar off. There's going to be immediate mass exodus of teleports in. But DD desperately wants this kill. Arm light making S4 so difficult to bring down. Blade Fury is going to be popped. Can DD escape successfully? They don't have the roar. Eclipse is going to be used. Crit dodging so well. But unfortunately, you can only dodge for so long. Loda does end up picking up a kill. Darkness is casted because S4 decided to buy back and wants to keep up the pursuit. Sashka did cast a Vendetta, and Sashka is going to escape one for one. But I swear, DD is a buyback, so not the worst engage in 4 DD. But still. Actually, I mean, they use the Eclipse as well. So really, DD came out in that engage in all, pretty alright, because Calcus uh, continued to farm. What will Calcus go for? Will he go for anything? Because it can't get wrapped around. And Calculus, did he, was he watching that sentry ward? Because again, minimap. Yes, he was. A nice awareness by Calculus. As I imagine, he wanted to farm the jungle, but spy the heroes moving past the sentry ward. And just decide to get the heck out of dodge. And keep in mind, tier 1s don't have backdoor regen, so... The dodge can just uh, try to man up and try to kill it. But Glyph has been used. And NTH just don't care. They're just going to push in. And going to kill that tower very easily. So right now it is three towers for No Time Hunter compared to three towers for DD. Or no, four towers for DD. But again, a huge experience advantage for No Time Hunter. And they do have the better late game. DD, I wonder what their game plan is going to go for. As Juggernaut trying to build his way towards a Manta. Probably the best choice now. But I think, uh... Even though Aghanims is sort of a joke on Juggernaut, I think in this situation, giving Juggernaut some extra HP and a couple bounces in the early game definitely can't be underestimated. But I might be worried about Rubik's potentially stealing that because Rubik would get the Aghanims upgrade. And Juggernaut still, even if he went for Aghanims, would be very far away. 
Meow, Loda finished up the Manta style. 200 gold in the bank. Gonna do a bit of damage to Link. Link really can't handle a level 15 Loda while he's only level 11. Forced to retreat. And Didi's like, oh no, smoke's on cooldown. What do we do? As uh, so I just want to see. Nope, can't see. But again, they still have the roar. They still have a very capable Ganku lineup, but it is about to hit that second night where Night Stalker does reign supreme. At least he should, because this is pretty much his last night to remain super relevant. Because after that, magical damage really doesn't do as much. But Night Stalker didn't really go for a caster build. Went for more of a DPS build with an armlet. And you know, Luna, Met style drums. Gonna go for that point booster. Probably just a casual point booster, I imagine. Won't finish that straight up Aghanim's S4. Aki meanwhile has another drums. No time to do of their drums. Bulldog trying to find his way towards his own BKB. Even if there is a roar, can just uh, really benefit from that BKB being used. Surprisingly, well, it makes sense, I guess. Not picking up a Ghost Scepter because it's just Juggernaut level 2 ultimate. It's not like Juggernaut level 2 ultimate. It completely devastates no time hunter, especially if they're all clumped up so that the bounces just transfer from one here to another. So, not too surprising that there's no Ghost Scepter just yet. But whenever I see a Juggernaut in the game, I'm like, oh, a new team should just pick up. 80 Ghost Scepters, but actually there's a lot of magical damage, whether it be in the form of NA or Leshrac. As I think DD kind of confused on how they should approach this with the second knight now here. Night Stalker doing gonna be very dangerous to face up against Eclipse is up. Lucy Meme gonna display that dispel that Roshan shield. Allowing a lot of damage to come down. DD do not know about this. Nope, now they do, because the Trian is going to scout out, but DD can't really do anything about it. That's a problem. And Aki just continuously barraging those poor helpless Trians with his rockets. Luna picks up the Aegis. And the question is, what can DD do to stop this? Really, really not too sure. They're just going to have to farm up. And hopefully their split push with that Nature's Pop really starts to get going. A lot of pressure is on Calcus. Finished up a pretty late uh, mecha. The calculus 0 2 and 6. Not really having the best game at this point. As it's going to wrap around game for crit. Crit say it ain't so. Not even going to use the Night Stalker. Just gets the casual avoid for the last hit. Going to give him some arm charges. And that's going to mean a tier 2 for NTH. So NTH managed to hold out with their nice team fight ultimates. And it might just end up winning them the game. And potentially the series. Because this is game two after NTH did win game one. And what will DD do? Does Beastmaster have buyback? He does, but he desperately does not want to have to use that. Glyph is on cooldown. This tier three will die, but the barracks won't be touched just yet. But keep in mind, Luna Glaives do bounce. Loda in awkward position, but Loda still has that Aegis Link. is going to Blade Fury up. It's going to take a lot of damage for that. They're going to have to get a Magnificent Healing Word to really heal up the range. You know, Calculus is going to push the top tier 2, hoping to bait out a teleport, but tier 2 already dead. Joke's on you, Calculus says we're going to pop a Night Stalker ultimate there, and then... And DD, they got to fight, otherwise they're going to lose a barracks. They're going to lose a barracks. That's their choice. And Crit's going to die as well. DD really just have solid pushing, but not really too much team fight, and unfortunately not too much... To initiate a fight as Ami Slash is gonna go on to Eternal Envy. Loda does pop the Eclipse. Here comes Loda as the bounces do manage to get caught in. Loda does lose his Aegis and Aki is gonna take a bunch of damage from the towers. Loda is gonna respawn, gonna try to right click. No, gonna run away from the Impale. And TH is just like, alright, we lost Aegis, we lost Eternal Envy. We got the barracks. We got two towers. Let's not play super aggressively. They still have a lot of damage on their side. Actually, Loda gonna turn back around. S4 wants to get into the thick of things. He's gonna get a crippling fear off onto. Rise, so Rise can't cast anything. Healing Ward is up. Healing Ward not being focused, but it looks like they don't care about the Healing Ward because they're driving everybody away from the Healing Ward. As Loda trying to do his bunch of damage, Rise is finally able to cast spells. Loda is beyond godlike. Can Loda escape so fast, so furious? Tokyo drifting away. As Link trying to get a kill. Urn going to be dispelled. Nice right click as Calcus is teleporting in. They do get the roar. They're going to kill Loda as well. So no time to do end up losing four heroes in that exchange. Actually ended up losing all six of their heroes at one point. That's this 
fucking bugged. What? Not too sure what Loda is annoyed about. Matter with chicken, please. <laughs> it's not a chicken, it's a grievel. Grievel have no grievel rights. God. <laughs> but Loda is a properly apologetic. It's not Loda was raging at the Radiant. Or raging at his team. It's just his courier. But Dire overextend themselves, could just potentially have gotten away with just an Aegis and Eternal Envy loss, but decide to go back in and pay for it, even if they did get a couple kills. So DD still have an avenue to get back themselves in the game, because got a lot of experience from that, you know, to make up some of that deficit. <clears throat> but now as far as finish the BKB, second night is gonna run out very, very soon. Or no. I thought it was second night for a while. Might have been mistaken. But second night is still gonna go on. It's third night. I'm not too sure. Eternal Envy. Gonna get Omni to right in the face. You know, Sprout gonna go on to Aki. Here comes Loda. Gonna do a lot of damage to Link. Link can has to get out of there. But Loda has a face. Scotty! Loda gonna take a lot of damage. Can Loda escape? Does have Eclipse if he wants to use it? No, he's just gonna run away. Trying to get himself back in the team fight does get the Eclipse going off, but no, he's going to die for his trouble. He's going to get impaled right into the ground. He's going to die. And Loda doesn't have buyback. This could be the opportunity that Didi was waiting for, losing only crit in that engagement, who still had the roar. But Didi just going to get the creeps going. Creeps, unfortunately, are very far away to reinforce that. But still, Didi has to try. They're going to use the mass amount of treants that Calculus is able to summon, but no healing word. The healing Ward has finally been used, but unfortunately not too much mana to sustain the push of DD. And the Healing Ward constantly going to refill the range end, but nobody's killing the Healing Ward on the side of the Dire. S4 going to come back in, try and initiate onto Rise. Healing Ward keeping everybody alive, but again, no mana on the side of DD, but they desperately want to make something happen with Loda being dead. Unfortunately, they don't have any Arcanes on their side. And I think that is exactly what Leshack is going to go to the shop to get. He does get the Arcanes. But Loda's going to respawn very shortly. Doesn't have Eclipse, but again, that's Scotty and the Mask of Death. Going to be very instrumental. Calculus is going to take a Janata hit and a Missile right to the face. Here comes Split Earth. Going to be cancelled by Rise, knowing that couldn't hit too many targets as he's trying to be just put all Spike Campus. He's going to rush into the middle of everything. Loda's still dead. Nature's Bob does buy back and wants to get back in the thick of things, but DD Link is forced to escape. S4 just going on a rampage. Getting those right clicks with his massive meaty hooks as Calculus. Gonna uh, buy back Teleport in, but just might pay for it with his life again. And Loda is finally back in the middle of everything. And Aki, the support general copter, managed to get himself a triple kill. Look at Aki, he is so rich, my god. A triple kill with track kills to boot. And I think that might have been the last gasp of DD. And you saw. Man, I can't believe nobody on DD had arcane boots. No, Beastmaster had arcane boots, but Crit was dead. Oh man, that was so unfortunate for DD. But now the creeps are going to start getting pushed back. DD still have a shot. Juggernaut getting pretty farmed. But still, I imagine Loda won't make that same mistake. I imagine he's going to go straight for BKB now. Nope, going to finish up that Helmet Dominator. Makes sense. Get that extra life steal. Get that extra armor. They're going to be very useful. But Golgraph starting to take a bit of a deciding blow for the Dire. Breaching that 10k mark, experience graph dipping back below that 10k mark in favor of the dire net worth load of 5,000 ahead of anybody else on the side of DD. GPM hugely in favor of Loda. Levels, S4 and Loda just dominating the charts. And I think once BKB is finished by Loda, it's going to be incredibly difficult for DD to fight Loda because he's getting disabled by Nyx, Beastmaster Roar. And only the Chain of Sailors are really keeping Loda down because they're focusing so much of their mana and their energy on Loda. But I think uh, NTH is just going to turtle it out till Loda finishes BKB and then they're going to try to end it as Calculus going to teleport away. Missile. Proving itself to be a very worthwhile stun. We'll just watch this missile casually run across the battlefield. Oh man, it's speeding up. It's getting hot. It's going in. Sashka going to get one hit. Now Missile too fast. 
Centaur, you can't touch this missile. It is heat seeking. Tower, what are you doing? This is a missile. Did an astounding damage to calculus because it is just a level one missile. Stats are more useful than it. Missile number two. Meow Link trying to finish up his MKB. No, it doesn't have butterfly ammo, it's still MKB. Probably the best time for Juggernaut. It doesn't really benefit nearly as much from a crit. Even if he does benefit from a crit somewhat. Link trying to get a proper positioning. Loda is going to serve as the perfect bait because he does have buyback. As there's going to be an engagement, Central Ward has been used. S4 trying to charge in with that darkness up. But DD staying very, very far back. Boar and Hawk and Sentry Ward scouting out the positioning of No Time to showing DD. All right, we don't really want to fight this, but Calgus is going to get voided. Here come the axes. Can Crit get the roar off? He's going to get silenced. BKB popped by S4. Here comes the Eclipse. Scotty, Luna, your worst nightmare as Eternal Envy dies once again. But unfortunately, Eternal Envy not really able to do too much in these engagements. Regardless, Calgus is going to die too. The massive slowing glaives by Loda. Godlike dominating. Loda is unstoppable. And GG well played has been called for DD as they had a really awesome strategy. But unfortunately, they underestimated the power of Eclipse and they underestimated the power of Calldown. And a couple of crucial engagements. And unfortunately, that didn't net them the loss, but really, really entertaining game. Unfortunately, DE probably going to fall to 1-1 one one in the league, I think, uh, in the Dota 2 league, after beating Empire. Do end up losing to no time to 2-0. But that's going to end in this game. Really nicely done by NTH. Uh, moving up to 2-1 and one in this raid called Dota 2 league. Or there may they might be 2-2, two two, not too sure. But still, looking pretty sharp ever since Eternal Envy has returned to action after being in China. So thank you for watching, as usual. Again, the casts roll on through one video a day, January. Over halfway done, holy crap. I don't know if I can finish it, but with your support, if you keep supporting, spreading the word, I might be able to keep doing it for January and hopefully even more. But thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Peace.